Yo, Ryan, we're in your Tesla Model 3. Um, this is a nice car, but you know that new Model 3 is coming out, the Project Highland got announced. Yeah, a lot of really cool updates. There's some really cool upgrades, ventilated seats, more efficiency, a lot of really amazing stuff. Are you gonna get one? Yeah, no. Fair enough. There's a lot of things they changed. I think we're gonna miss that, or you're gonna miss that. I would miss it a Model 3, but Tesla's got so much stuff going on right now. Ryan, let's seriously break it down, talk about Tesla's pricing, how to use their website, and uh, what the current state of Tesla is as of um, this month, this week, at least today. Let's do it. Okay, Ryan, so Tesla, state of it right now, you love your Model 3. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's far from perfect, and we've even made a video discussing some of the things I don't like. But overall, it's been a great car. I've been really satisfied with it. I've been on a few road trips, and it's been great. Yep, and people can check out, yeah, the video where we talked about the things you do like in your Model 3 and the general things we don't like about Tesla. Those still stand true. And to address the elephant in the room that we you know, joked about in the intro, Highland, that new Model 3, yes, it looks really sweet. To be honest, we have no details in the US when it comes to pricing and specs, and it seems like there might not be a performance version of it coming out. Um, there's a lot of unknowns at the moment with it. We know the new features, and uh, Dave and I did a video on this channel breaking a lot of those early features down. Uh, you can also look on the rumor sites and see all the press releases about that. But Ryan, regardless of the new features, we're not getting that car here for months. It's gonna be a while. They actually haven't announced when it will happen, but I imagine it won't be any time in the super near immediate future. Again, Tesla could always surprise us, but as of filming this video, we have heard nothing. But uh, something interesting that I think would be worth going over is there have been other Tesla pricing changes. So Model 3, right now inventory cars, are super cheap if you're interested in a sedan. Yes, that's something that's really cool right now. There's a lot of really great deals, several thousand dollars off a bunch of different Model 3s, and there's new inventory all around the country, and there's all the different specs and to be honest there's not a whole lot of different things you can do with the model 3 so it's pretty likely you'll be able to find the model 3 that you want with uh, a pretty steep discount yep the thing to know with tesla uh, if you don't already is their configurations are really simple they deliberately keep their you know the number of SKUs they have uh very limited uh which makes inventory cars assessing them on their website very easy and even if you don't buy a tesla inventory car if you buy used tesla somewhere else it's a good way to kind of check on the state of the market as the cars are going up and down in price but that's inventory cars it seems ryan to me at least right now that model 3 and model y have some sweet inventory deals a lot of tesla cars do but model 3 in particular because of everyone anticipating that refresh coming here. Certainly, it's a great time to get into one. And yes, of course, the refresh is coming around the corner, but the refresh isn't going to be for everyone. And, you know, there's a, a lot of really great stuff about the current Model 3. It's a really compelling vehicle, a lot of great stuff about it. Yeah, so if you're buying a Model 3, I think right now in the US, almost certainly go for an inventory car, unless you really have particular taste. But honestly, like we said, not that many options. You get an inventory car, you're usually seeing a few thousand dollars off MSRP. And remember, that's still considered a new car, just one that's been built. So it still gets all of the federal tax credit eligibility and all of those wonderful things. It's a similar story for Model Y, but you uh, Model Y, I don't think, has quite the same inventory deals at the moment. Uh, and we're not anticipating a Model Y refresh anytime particularly soon. That's correct, yes. But 3 and Y are great volume Tesla cars. The dark horses of Tesla's lineup, I think, are the Model S and the X. Older cars, their luxury, their performance, we've got the Plaid powertrain, they're really cool. Of course, Kyle loves his, well, loves and hates his Tesla Model S Plaid. Uh, complicated relationship with it, uh, if you want to see that on out-of-spec reviews. But, you know, very impressive cars, just more expensive. A lot has changed in the last few weeks with those, Ryan. Yeah, it's, it's been really exciting. They used to be, in the beginning of the year, crazy expensive. And throughout the year, they've just been cutting prices back and back and back. Yep, for a hot minute, there was actually a standard range, Model S and Model X, which were discounted by about 10 grand cheaper than their original counterparts. And we everyone speculated it was very likely just a software lock of the battery, uh, which Tesla has done before, where they basically have the same car, they don't have to change the way they're building it, but when they ship it to you, it limits its battery and they can sell it to you for cheaper. Uh, and over time, maybe even sell you a software upgrade to unlock it. They sold those for all of like two weeks and now they removed them. And the standard range ones, the ones with the same range they always have been, with the battery fully unlocked, 
um, are actually even cheaper now. Yeah, a massive price cut on both the Model S and actually as well the Model X. Yes, so super important to note when you're browsing Tesla's site, if you're looking at any of them, Model S, X, 3, or Y, you've got to go to purchase price. They show you potential savings, trying to you know, show in gas costs and other kinds of savings, I think maybe the tax credit. Um, that's useful to see, but I, no, it's not useful to see, let me be honest. Just look at the purchase price, it's the right way to compare them. And if I'm looking at purchase price, yeah, standard range Model S at this point is just under $75,000. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a really compelling uh, vehicle at that price point. And I think previously when it was close to 90 grand, it was it was a little bit less compelling. But here now, I think that's that's a great price for a car that has very good range, exceptional charging, and, uh, you know, far from perfect, but a very good car and a great road tripper. Yep, amazing road tripper. Uh, two really important things to note. The Plaid is now that old $90,000 uh, price that the base one used to be. Uh, that's insane. The acceleration you get with that tri-motor powertrain, uh, that being now $90,000 for Model S is sweet. And Ryan, get this, all of the paint colors, including ultra red, are now included. That's great. I'm a, I'm a fan of the ultra red. I think it looks great. And I, I really like that they're including all the colors now, all the five colors that they offer. <laughs> yes, what a rainbow of choices with Tesla. I think I speculate, you know, we're not business analysts on this channel, but it seems like with the economy, higher interest rates, and Model S and X being, frankly, just older, less exciting parts of Tesla's lineup, they're having trouble selling these. So they're throwing in every perk they can to try to get you to buy one of these. And if you are interested, if you're in that market for a luxury sedan, that's sweet. So Model S is nice, but Ryan, I think Model X might actually be even more interesting because what they've done here is actually same as Model S free paint colors, um, just overall price reduction, no more software locked version, just the standard full range version, 348 EPA miles that we've come to expect is cheaper. But the key thing here is the exact price of it. The base price, assuming you had no options, nothing, is $79,990. And Ryan, do you have any idea why it's that price? Uh, that's for you to get the federal EV incentive. That'll be $7,500. Yeah, for fairly substantial. We made videos on this channel about who qualifies for that, um, the federal tax incentive. Not everyone does, but if you are, uh, the Model X, because it's an SUV, has an 80,000 price cap. So this base Model X, assuming you add no options, could give you that $7,500 tax credit. Uh, and that is awesome. So then effectively, right, it could be like a $73,000 vehicle. Uh, similar story here. Interestingly, the Model X Plaid is like the exact same price as the Model S Plaid. So interesting. Yeah, I yeah. guess. What shape do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you want the minivan of EVs or do you want the sleek, you know, original sedan that kind of, I, I would argue, put Tesla on the main street? Up to you. Um, they're both, you know, they're both cool. If you want the Falcon wing doors and all the good and bad that entails, Model X is there. But man, that's really, it's just so interesting to follow Tesla because they always are throwing out unpredictable moves like this. And Really, when two weeks ago they introduced these standard range configurations, I think you or I would have assumed, okay, that's how it's gonna be for a few months now until the next product refresh. But nope, they're just gone. Yeah, it was surprising how short that, that was around. I wonder if anyone actually bought them. Yeah, but... if you bought one of those and actually ended up picking delivery, maybe get in touch with us. We'd love to make a video about it because I feel like those ones, even though it's just a software lock, may, I mean, that's gotta be rare, right? I'm, I'm sure very, very few people ended up purchasing that. <laughs> as collectible as, uh, you know, commodity uh, vehicles can be, maybe that's an interesting collectible item. I don't know, Ryan, but maybe because it's software, maybe no one cares. I don't know. That's me speculating. Anyhow, that's kind of the story with Tesla at the moment. Very simple product lineup. Okay, Cybertruck, sure. Uh, we don't know anything about that. So we're not going to comment on that. And the Highland we already mentioned. We don't know the story in the US. I will say before we close off this video, Ryan, in addition to you know not to seeing potentially signs of no performance Model 3 with the new one, we've also seen that uh, it's a little more expensive, which I think you would expect given all the upgrades, but um, from European and Chinese pricing, it's a few thousand dollars probably more than the old Model 3. Yes, a little bit more expensive, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And. We'll have to wait and see on the performance version. I suspect that at some point they will end up making it, but uh, maybe not for the first little while. We'll, of course, uh, stay tuned and figure out exactly what's going to be going on. Perhaps. So what we can speculate and say is if you want a Model 3 performance, probably it seems like there's uh, 
you know, now could be a good time to order it. And what we have seen historically with Model 3 and a lot of Tesla vehicles is that they do hold the residual value okay, at least what passes for residual value in the EV market where technology is always changing. Yes, and of course the entire EV market has been a bit uh, cooling off a bit recently, but again, the resale prices are still pretty solid. I can tell you, Ryan, your Model 3 has depreciated less than my Polestar 2, for instance. <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, it's always interesting, but never a bad time to, um, well, it could be a bad time to buy a Tesla, but right now actually is an interesting time to buy a Tesla because they're throwing all these incentives for you. So it's not like, you know, so dramatic that it's like, oh, I wasn't considering Model S or Model X and now I'll buy them. But it's more like, okay, if I was considering a sedan, a sedan in this class, maybe I was leaning towards a Mercedes EQS or a BMW i7. Well, now all of a sudden, yeah, the Tesla has fewer features, maybe not as luxury, but has wicked fast acceleration and it's a hell, heck of a lot cheaper. Yeah, and I also want to reiterate that while the new Tesla will be coming out in the near future, uh, you don't necessarily need to wait for it. The, the current vehicles are really great. There's a lot of great discounts on them. And between the discounts and the uh, suspected price increase that we'll see, I think this is still a pretty good time to buy a Model 3. Yeah, Model 3 and Y, still a good time to buy. Y especially too, uh, we're not expecting that new Y anytime soon. So every time there's a new product you know release coming out like iphone or something we know iphones will be shipped in the next few weeks with tesla supply chains these are cars we're talking about it's so difficult we can't know the future but if you have other tips or you think we're missing something uh tesla's lineup is very simple but maybe we've gone over you know one small detail or there's a strategy you have for how you're going to trade in a vehicle and you know make the best tesla purchase feel free to leave that in the comments looking forward to talk to you on the next one awesome see you Ryan.